Hello everyone. I hope you all are safe, healthy, happy in this COVID crisis. I hope you all are doing okay in this time of terrible unrest. I feel so bad for George Floyd and his family. Uh, it bothered me to no end that this event happened and it shouldn't have happened. There was no need for it. Um, I was talking about it with a friend of mine and I understand the riots, you know, as MLK said, a riot is the reaction, in my words, of the unheard. If your voice is not being heard, and you have no other options, then what are you going to do? It's about choices, right? That's today's topic, choices. Um, it kind of like, I've got a number of grandchildren. I love them dearly. And for a while, I had three of the boys living with me. And they were always pretty good. Every once in a while, the youngest would have a meltdown of some kind. I remember one time he, he had a meltdown because he wasn't being heard. We weren't really, really listening to him. So when we finally did listen to him, you know, he stopped his trauma. And sometimes that's what children do. I mean, there are other reasons why they have, you know, tantrums and meltdowns but people aren't aren't that all much different because when you tried to talk to the system you tried to tell people you know you tried to tell the media politicians and nobody's listening and nobody's correcting the problem then your only reaction is to maybe this will get your attention. I tried everything else. Now granted there are people out there that just love the violence period and that's unfortunate. And the stealing, well come on folks really? I'm more concerned about the murder than I am the, the violence of the riots. Although when people get hurt, like there was a cop that got hurt, and there are people that got hurt by the police and the National Guard and all that, it's just a shame. It's a shame. It should stop. Both sides. If, if there has to be a side, you know, this is the powers that be. The, they love it. They absolutely love it. They love our division, you know. In the end, who makes money on this? They do. News. All that. I was talking to a friend of mine about this. And we were talking about how we went through this in 1964. The L.A. riots. Chicago riots. Kent State. You know, it just... It was always a shame, and it was never necessary, at least in my mind, it never necessary. I never understood violence against another person. I understand anger. I can even understand hatred. But violence, it's just not my nature. Not my nature. Um... When Woodstock happened, I think it was 1968, 69, and there were half a million hippies, if you will, 
they got together and had three days of music community and the community of Woodstock instead of getting angry about it bless their hearts they fed them when they ran out of food they fed them come on you know they brought in special services emergency services and all of that so that when people got sick or got hurt whatever they were able to take care of them and some people had to be flown out and they did you know um but it shows that people gathering doesn't always mean violence you know i'm not even going to talk about what trump did i'm going to ignore that one okay that's i'm not here to politicize i'm just here to say that i'm very saddened by all the recent events and i wish love and peace for everybody everybody so i'm going to talk about choices today i'm going to read you an old indian story that the internet has kind of turned on its head uh i'm going to read you the internet version and then i'm going to go on to the real version okay and those who have ears listen to my words please please again i'm not here to preach uh suggest advise and comment but do as you think best and hopefully i just hope these words help you a little bit but here's the story an old Cherokee is teaching his grandson about life. A fight is going on inside of me, he said to the boy. It is a terrible fight between two wolves. One is evil. He has anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. He continued, but the other is good. He is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The same fight is going inside of you, inside of every other person too. The grandson thought about it for a minute, and then asked his grandfather, which wolf will win? Well, this is where the internet says, the old Cherokee simply replied, the one you feed. No. no. That never sat well with me. I don't know why. I... How do you divide a child in half? How do you divide yourself in half? You don't. You can't. But what you can do is this. The old Cherokee smiled and replied, If you feed them right, they both win. The story goes on. You see, if I only feed the white wolf, the black wolf will hide in the darkness, waiting for me to falter. So that it can pounce and get the attention he craves. He will always be angry and always be fighting the white wolf. But if I acknowledge him, both he and the white wolf can be satisfied and we all win. For the black wolf has qualities that I need, that the white wolf lacks tenacity, courage, fearlessness, strength of will, and resourcefulness. The white wolf instead provides compassion, caring, heart, and the ability to value the needs of others over my own. You see, the two wolves need each other. 
Feeding one and starving the other will only eventually make both uncomfortable. Caring for both allows them both to serve you so that you can do something greater. Something good with your time on earth. Feed them both and you will quiet their internal struggle for your attention. And then, when there is no battle inside, you can hear the voices of deeper knowledge that will guide you in choosing the right path in every circumstance. Peace, my son, is what we must all strive for in life. He who has peace inside has everything. He who harbors a storm within his heart and soul has nothing. How you choose to treat the opposing forces within you will ultimately determine how you live. That's the complete story. If I had two wolves pulling a sled, or two dogs, say, pulling a sled, and I fed one and didn't feed the other, what do you think would happen? We'd be lopsided. It would be... There will always be an alpha dog, right? An alpha wolf. There's always one that's going to lead the way. But even the leader needs his companions behind him or his companions with him right a lone wolf not really alone he may not have a pack around him but he has life around him and eventually he needs someone else so we can't all be one thing or the other Okay, our ego, we need it to a point, but the point is to not let our ego rule ourselves. The point is to have our ego under, under control so that anger, fear, hatred doesn't overrule our senses so that our loving internal loving nature and compassion can come out now we make choices throughout the day every day my point is that how do you make those choices some choices are easy to make am i going to go left or am i going to go right does it make a difference sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't But when the choices are important, it's important not to let your ego get in the way. You need your ego. Yes, you do. But you have to be careful of your internal voices. Don't let your internal voices rule you. Don't let your fear rule you when you need to step up. I've been hard of hearing most of my life since I was very young and after college I was living in the city by myself and I found myself fearful all the time because I couldn't really hear things around me. It was kind of a frightful experience. If you've never had a hearing loss, you, you have no idea what that's like. Um, the closest thing I come to it is if you're partially blind and you can, you can barely see where you're going. That, that's fearful. Because you just don't know you, what you don't know. And the same thing. I had a hard time communicating with people. I... Um, I felt like I was making a fool of myself all the time because I misunderstood so many things. So I started getting angry about that situation. 
I didn't know how to improve it. I had no idea. And at the time I was uh, in drafting, I was the head of the drafting department of six guys, nothing major, but it was a struggle for me. Oh my God, it was a struggle. So I had some advice to go see some people and talk to them about it. So I did. And one person led me to another person, led me to another person, and on and on. And finally, I met this one gentleman who was completely deaf. And he was a counselor. And he had a, an interpreter there with him. And I thought this guy was simply amazing. That he could do what he did without any hearing. I don't know if he had a little bit of hearing or just none completely. My memory is that he had no, no hearing whatsoever. But he could communicate. He could talk to you. He could understand you, a person of what you were trying to say. And he suggested I get hearing aids. Now, I had resisted getting hearing aids up to that point. Plus, I didn't think I could afford them, right? And I went, you know what? i got to let my pride go. My ego, if you will, was in the way. Vanity. I didn't want hearing aids. You know, well, you know. well, he told me how I could get them for free sent me to this place, this rehabilitation place, and they asked me, are you working? And I went, yeah, I'm having a hard time, but yeah, I'm working. And they said, well, because you're employed and you need them, we'll give them to you for free. I went, really? So they set me up with a doctor, my hearing aid doctor, my hearing doctor, and he set me up with my first pair of hearing aids, and that was a long time ago. But I had to make a choice whether I was going to live with that fear and anger or do something about it. When my father passed away, I don't know, I was what, 10, 11, 12, something like that. I was the youngest of five, and I really didn't handle that well, because I never got to say goodbye to him. I didn't even know he was sick. Nobody said anything. And afterwards, nobody still said anything. We didn't talk to each other about it. We didn't console each other. We didn't grieve together like we should have. And I think it uh, resonated into our lives even today. But I got angry about that. And I was just angry about everything. Oh, I was a... That was a hot mess, young man. Until I decided that the anger wasn't helping. It didn't do me any good. So I decided that I had to change that. I had to lose that anger. It didn't happen overnight. I had to learn to deal with that anger. And eventually I did. It took me a while when I finally came to my senses. And I remember one time I was with a, uh, a friend of mine. I was playing a gig and we were on a break. We were outside talking. And somehow the subject of fathers came up. I don't remember. And I said one of the, my biggest regrets is that I'd never said goodbye to him. And he turned to me and said, you just did. And I went, hmm, that's kind of profound. 
you know, I did. Then, yeah, I did. So that really helped me let go of my anger. Over that. Okay. Ego is going to get in the way sometimes. But if you do your best to learn to control it so that it doesn't run your life. But you use it. Like having two dogs. The white one and the black one. Be careful of your choices because they all have consequences. We used to talk to our grandsons constantly and say choices have consequences. Good choices, good consequence. Bad choice, bad consequence. Now the thing that is is that with a bad choice it may not, the consequence may not pop up right away. Okay? It's not like, you know, oh I made a bad choice, oh I got hurt. Oh! It may not necessarily happen, right? But the problem is those bad choices pile up. Even the good choices pile up. And you get good consequences. Bad choices, the consequences pile up. And the longer it takes for those consequences to pile up and act out, the bigger the results. Just like equality today. Because the equality hasn't happened and the hatred is still there, the ignorance is still there. It piles up. Bad choices for society. It piles up. When politicians make bad choices on what's happening, the consequences pile up and it explodes like a volcano. What are you going to do about it? You're going to bring more violence? Violence begets violence. Love begets love. Listen to the people. Make their voices heard. Crying out loud. You want a better world? Then be a better person. Be above your ego. Be above the person that hurts you. Don't be petty. Ah, oh, that's today's sermon and rant. I apologize. I don't mean to tell people what to do. I can only say what's on my mind and in my heart. I want people to be better to each other. I want people to take care of each other. I don't know why we can't. We all have issues that we're going through. We all have things that we desire. But you gotta realize that material things well, nice to have, pleasant to have, it's not everything. It's not what's really important in this life. I thank God every day for the abundance that he gives me. You should too. Be thankful of your family. Be thankful of the difficulties around you because if you use them as a lesson, you become a better person. I pray to God that I'd be better today than I was yesterday. Even by a little bit. Because every step is a step forward. When I'm not so good, I step back. And I apologize. Does it make me a, wor a weaker person? A, a worse person to apologize for something? No. It makes me a better person. 
God knows I've got enough things to apologize for. I'm not perfect. I would like to be better. That's all. I would like to be better. God bless you all. Be safe. Be caring. Be kind. Be well. Be happy. May you all have a good day. Thank you.